Hey there, my fellow designers and creatives. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to another video in my mega product design course for beginners. If you haven't checked out the course and playlist, make sure to check it out. Link will be down below in the description. In this video, we're gonna learn how to document design components after creating them, of course. Now, this is second part of a two-part series. And in the first part, I basically show you how to go ahead and create such a complex component structure using base components, using component properties, and using variants, right? So there's a lot that I cover in the video and it's it's super helpful, super informative. So make sure to definitely watch it. It's going to cover a lot of the topics that you never thought existed, right? So now let's move on to the main part, which is creating the documentation, which is going to be used by developers and designer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some sort of a template or a structure that you can follow. And basically the things you need to have when you're documenting your components, right? Now, this is just a template. So you don't really have to copy this exactly. Just understand how to do it and you can go ahead and design it and document it the way you want, right? So starting off, we just have basically the name of the component, which is a list item. And then we have some description about it. And then we have a status. So ideally teams have dedicated design system teams and we have dedicated engineers as well to go ahead and build these components in the code base, right? Sometimes engineers do it on their own. Sometimes there is a dedicated design system team that handles all of this, right? So in this case, taking an example, it's just that the design team has completed documenting everything. The iOS team has built all the components and variants using the iOS code base, and then Android team is yet to do it, right? There are other things like resources that you can link. So you can basically click on the, you know, basically the text layer and press command K. And I think you can go ahead and paste a URL. It could be to a Google doc, it could be to Google sheet, it could be to a Jira ticket, it could be to anything else, right? So this is where you can go ahead and document and some resources if you think that needs to be there. Okay, then moving on, we have this thing called as the prime component. Now, why do I call it prime component is because we have a lot of base components and sub components. And as designers, we just want them to come and pick this from here, right? Because this has all the properties inbuilt. And for example, if I can show you, um, if I go ahead and make a copy of this, for example, you can see that this has all the properties, right? So how do you construct this? Obviously, again, make sure to check out that video. I cover all of that in that video. Um, but basically, you want designers to come and pick from this component and then make the respective changes, right? So I'm just going to quickly delete that. So in this case, I have three states, which is an active state, which is a hover state, and it's a disabled state. And then we have two types, which is basically a default and then one with a progress bar, right? Uh, this is how it was constructed. So this is just an example. Your components might look very different. They might be constructed in a very different way. So you have to take a judgment call on that. Okay, next, moving forward, we have some section, which is the note for designers. This is basically for things for designers to note, things to do, things not to do. It could be anything. If you don't feel there is no need for having notes, you can remove it altogether. Then you have some notes for engineers as well. This is again, very straightforward. Anything that you feel needs to be here, you can mention that or else you can remove it. Okay. Now, the next part is frequently used variants. A lot of times designers are working on certain projects and they're going to reuse a particular variant of a component multiple times, right? So rather than going ahead and always selecting this main component and then making the changes, which obviously takes a lot of time, it's fine to have some of the commonly used or frequently used variants right over here. So in that case, designers can just come over here and pick this component, which is already has some certain properties applied and then use them in their design, right? So that saves a lot of time rather than always selecting this main component, which is basically the prime component and then making the changes to it, right? So it's good to have a couple of them. You can have up to 10, 15, how many of how many other possible combinations that are there depending on how the designers are going to be using it. Okay, next is to explain the anatomy of the prime component. So basically what I've done here is I've actually taken a screenshot of what it looks like when I tap on this component. So if I click on this, you can see we have a bunch of uh, settings over here and this is how it looks like. What you want to do is obviously you want to go ahead and identify parameters that can be changed, right? Now, state active type default, we already covered that over here, right? But what we didn't cover are the other sections, which is basically accordion, end component, start component, and a subtext, right? So here what I've done is I've selected each of the elements that are customizable and I've gone ahead and given the names so that when a designer is looking at this, he or she knows what are the things that can be customized, right? It's important to let the user know to what extent these can be customized. Okay, so how do I create these lines? It's very simple. So let me give you a quick example of doing that. So I'm just gonna grab this text here as well to show you an example, and I'm gonna make this to be white so we can see it, right? So there's a plugin called as Autoflow, 
and you can just go ahead in the plugin section and then you can run that. Basically, you can choose the color, you can choose the stroke, rounding, you know, whatever you need, right? It's completely customizable. Then all you need to do is you need to select the element and then you want to press shift and then you want to click on the other element. And then it goes ahead and creates this attachment. Now, if you feel that you want to move things around with this dialog box open, right? You can click on the other element and just move it around. And then the auto flow arrow mark just automatically adapts, right? And the moment you close it, uh, it no more adapts. Uh, so make sure that if you want to move it around, you can go ahead and um, keep the dialog box open and then go ahead and move this around according to where you want it, right? So that's basically how you would go ahead and create it. So I've gone ahead and done that. So I've done that for the accordion and this basically toggles the chevron. I don't know why you can see this purple box, but that seems to be some sort of a bug. Anyway, then you have the end component. And if you see over here, I have this arrow. Basically what this means is I can go one level deeper into the end components, base components and pick them as well. If you don't know what I'm talking about, again, make sure to watch that video. It's super important to understand how base components work if you want to set up a design system. And then we have the start element and then we have the end element and then we have a subtext as well, right? So as you can see, even here in the naming convention, I've added the icon. Then once you have the anatomy of the prime component, you can go ahead and explain each of the sub components or base components, right? So first of all, we start off with the title. And the reason I've added this slash is to explain that this is a sub component and not really a main component. So over here, basically uh, I've just copied screen, uh, actually screenshotted or maybe cropped is the right word uh, for this accordion and then pasted that over here. And basically I'm showing you what happens for the for the title, what happens when I turn off and turn on. So I'm giving like a visual representation of what happens. So what I'm trying to do here, I'm, I'm, I'm selecting one of the sections of the component one by one and explaining what happens. So that is title. Then we have a skeleton. Actually, maybe I wanted to move the skeleton up right? Maybe that's better. Um, to quickly explain the skeleton, what I've done here is I've given an anatomy of basically the spacing of how it's constructed and what are the values. Now, this is primarily for in engineers because they need these values when they're coding it. Now, to understand how I've actually done this, I can take a quick example. So let me go ahead and make a duplicate of this. Now, what I've actually done is I've actually created these boxes that you can see over here. Okay. And if I delete a box, you can see that the element sort of move here and there. And that's because I've gone ahead and removed all the values. So if I go ahead and select this, all the auto layout values to be zero, because I want all the values to be placed based on the width and height of these elements. Okay. And I've just given them different colors. Basically these two are same color. Then we have uh, this green along with this green. And then you have this red, which is this red, which is pretty much the same color, right? So you want to go ahead and create this sort of uh, a skeleton so that the engineers know how this is basically constructed. Okay. Um, we can delete this. And again, I'm using the auto flow plugin to go ahead and create these lines so that they can see what the values are. Then of course we have title. Then you have start element. Now for the start element, we have two base components. So to explain what's happening here, let me take an example of this and I can go ahead and I can turn on, select the start, uh, start element over here. And as you can see, I have two options. One is an icon container and then the other one is a progress circle. And this has an icon swap property as well, right? So Basically what I've done here is I have these two variants and if I go ahead and select them, you can see that this is an icon container and then this is the progress circle, right? So I've gone ahead and mentioned all the variants and I've mentioned to which base component this works, which is basically the start element. And I've given two examples as well of how this looks, right? So this is an icon container and then this is the progress bar, just two options. I've also mentioned that this icon can be used as an instance swap if you want to swap the icon as well, right? So this is very clear as to understand when I look at this component and I look at the starting element, what are all, what are all the things that I can do with it? Then we have the end element. I've pretty much done the exact same thing for the end element. We have three options. We have a CTA, we have an icon, and then we have a tag, right? Now the tag also has a chevron. So I should have probably put an arrow. Uh, maybe we can do that now. So I'm going to select this, go ahead to auto flow, and then I'm going to go ahead and click on this, right? So, uh, I can just select this and move. So now basically I'm showing you what happens when I turn on the toggle. I think maybe I should probably bring this down here and then bring this here as well to show you that this is very much linked to the Chevron over here, right? So this clearly tells me that when I choose the tag option, I can turn on the Chevron as well. 
Okay. Now the other reason that this tag also has this uh, icon is because I can choose multiple types of tags, which means I can go one level deeper as well. Right. So to, to explain that, what I've done here is I've added two colons, right? Because this is two levels down. What that means is this is the main component. If I go over here and uh, select, I mean, I'm going to show you this one, right? This is the main component. And then this is the first level. Then the second level is basically this, where I can customize this. And the third level is I can customize the tag, right? So to quickly explain that once again, uh, let me just quickly come down over here. This is the first level, which is why it has one slash, right? And I can customize these, but I can go another level deeper, which is the second level and customize this individual tag element itself, which is why I've added a double slash over here. And now for some reason, it seems to be four. I'm just going to remove that one. I have three variants over here, and then I have the names of each of the variants. This is a su success variant, this is a failure variant, and this is a neutral variant, okay? <laughs> then you have subtext as well, which is again a sub-level. Actually, this is actually a prime, this is actually level one, this isn't level two, okay? So I can customize this subtext to this, or I can change it to something that has one tag, and I can change this to something that has two tags, right? Now, the other reason I have mentioned, I've added this icon is because I can come here and change the tag as well that we saw over here, three options. Uh, so to quickly take an example, I can select this and I can double click on the tag, and then I can change this to a failure tag as well, right? So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. I'm gonna delete this. And then come here, coming down, then we have edge cases. Now these are things that are not really very evident from the component. And these obviously depends on the component as such, right? So there are things that you cannot do, which is basically you don't want to increase the height of the component, right? That is something that you don't want to do. And in case the title or the subtext goes, you can decide, do you want it to truncate? Do you not want it to truncate? So these certain behaviors, you can mention these edge cases as well so that designers know how to go ahead and use these things. And then of course, finally ending, you have some examples. These are just blank screen, blank rectangles, but this is where you would put a screenshot or a mock-up of the design so that any new designer joining the team or when a new component is created, all the designers know or all the engineers know where to use this component in what particular screen, right? So this is basically how you would want to do a documentation of the component. This is a super simple short tutorial and I hope this uh, helped a lot. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comment sections down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing, awesome content. And I'll see you guys in my next video. So till then, take care and bye-bye.